I want to show you the perfect way to put your hands on the putter. Hey, my name is Eric Kaplan. I've had the pleasure of coaching multiple major champions, and I researched with top doctors of the Mayo Clinic to develop a putting group that can actually quell the unwanted range of motion of the hands and even cure the yips. Now, when you play golf, there are two base grips you can utilize. One grip is designed more for leverage and power. The other grip is designed for more control and consistency. And for as long as you're playing golf, you would certainly want to hold the club right underneath the heel pad of the hand. That creates a lot of leverage in your full swing of power. Now, I conducted all my research with these top doctors at Mayo as a way to help people with Parkinson's disease putt without tremors. And what we saw very quickly is something interesting. For as long as these people with Parkinson's were holding the putter down here in their fingers, like this, with a position of what's called radial deviation in their hands, we would see a lot of the tremors and shakes from this position. Now, the top doctors at the Mayo Clinic, they actually call the wrists the Rubik's Cube of the body. Because when you align the hand in different positions, different things will actually happen. And for people with Parkinson's, as well as everyone else, the moment you take the wrist from a position of what's called radial deviation into ulnar deviation, a wrist locking mechanism occurs. For those people with Parkinson's, it will stop the tremor. For people who just putt with a little bit of a yippy issue, it will get rid of the yips. And for everyone else, it creates a little bit more stability, help make those short putts inside of seven feet literally automatic. So how do we form this grip? I want you to start off holding the putter right in your sternum, pointing right at your sternum, right in between the two heel pads of the hand. And so we don't want the club down here in the fingers. That creates some radial deviation of the wrist. We want to have the putter in between the two heel pads of the hand, pointing right at your sternum. And so we want to put both hands in this capacity where putter's pointing at my sternum, right in between the two heel pads of the hand, conventional grip from there. And so what we want to be seeing is that we want to see a little bit of this ulnar deviation of the wrist. So again, we don't want to be in this position here because this would create a lot of wiggle room. The moment we bow the wrist down, it locks out the range of motion possible of the hands. So even while at home, I want you to hold the putter out in front of you, pointing right at your sternum. This is the anatomic center of your rotation, allowing the putter to work at one single axis from the spine. And from here, you want to see a little bit of a bowing action down of the wrist. And so what you're also going to feel if you're in the right position is a little bit of increased grip pressure in that top pinky. So why is this so important to understand? Well, I've done a lot of research into the yips. I understand that they come from not only the trail hand, but these two fingers. These are the trigger fingers. Adding more grip pressure to these two fingers cause all the unwanted pronation and supination of the hand. And so there's a very curious reason why when you get into this position of ulnar deviation, or what we call bylock number one, you also feel more grip pressure in that top pinky. And so there's something called the tenodesis effect. And as a young kid, I was enamored with going to the zoo watching the great apes hang from trees. I was mesmerized in terms of trying to understand how these great apes could literally hang in trees for literally hours without letting go. And I, I later realized working with all these top doctors at the, up at the Mayo Clinic is that it wasn't so much how strong their hands were, but rather the length of the tendons inside their fingers would not let their fingers elongate when their wrists are flat. They can only let go when they go like this. So in the human hand, the same thing happens, but in a much smaller capacity. The tendons that run along the fingers like this, the moment you create a little bit of ulnar deviation, you're naturally going to feel a little bit more grip pressure in the pinky, which will serve to disenfranchise these two muscles that want to fire that cause overactive hands and the yips. And so not only will this position serve to lock out the unwanted structural range of motion in terms of how it locks out the bone structure, it also serves to turn off the muscles that fire that cause the yips to begin with. And that's exactly why we call this bylock number one. But I do not say that I'm the pro on tour who invented this putting grip. I'm the guy who took a look underneath the surface of the skin to understand why this is beneficial. One of the guys I spent two or three hours with last year who does a lot of this in his putting stroke is Steve Stricker. So Steve Stricker found it very interesting to understand why he's been such a fantastic putter inside of close range. It's because not that he puts with the heel of the putter off the ground, but bringing the heel of the putter off the ground puts his wrist in a more ulnar deviated position where it creates a lot more stability. He found this very interesting because he didn't necessarily understand the biomechanical reasons why he's been such a great putter at short range. But he also said to me in confidence, he said, Eric, you know, my entire career I've been a great putter at short range, but my distance control always suffered. Now, the reason why was because of his posture. He was set up with all this curvature of his spine. And again, he had an issue in terms of the range of motion possible by which he could properly rotate. So he quickly got into a position where he was much more free to turn. And for his longer putts, instead of having to change how hard he hit the golf ball, because of his improved spine angle and improved range of motion, he can make a bigger stroke, which is going to help the distance control equation we'll talk about a little bit later on in this program. And so what he said to me that was also very interesting, he said, Eric, my entire career, I was trying to create a death grip in my top pinky. I said, Steve, you don't have to. It happens because of the grip you're in. And so 
the thing that goes along with this is the whole concept of putter fitting. Because somebody would say to me, Eric, well, now that I'm setting up with this position of owner deviation, what happens to my putter fitting? You know, is this going to bring the heel of the putter off the ground? And if so, has it influenced my putting stroke as a whole? <coughs> and so I have two degrees of loft on this putter. If I flip the lie angle over like this, that putter is now two degrees open. If I flip the lie angle over this much, the face is now one degree open. If I bring my lie angle up by one or two degrees because I'm in a more ulnar deviated position and setup, yes, my lie angle is a bit more upright, but this is only opening my face 0.025 of a degree. Considering the best players in the world struggle to return the putter back to one degree of square for a putt inside of 10 feet, this is nearly negligible in a zero gravity environment. Now, let's talk a little bit about other grip styles that we see, including left-hand low or cross-handed, as well as the claw. Now, for somebody who's been putting cross-handed, what they typically will do is they put their left hand or their lead hand more on top of the putter. And so the reason why this initially feels more stable is because if I put my left hand more on top of the putter, that lead hand is more ulnar and deviated position. Now, what giveth also taketh away. And if I put my left hand more on top of the putter, what happens to the alignment of my forearms? All of a sudden, my left arm wants to come more on top, which can certainly close the alignment of my shoulders, which is not a good thing in putting. So even though this can help create more stability in my hands, I don't have to go left hand low to create that stability by creating a little bit more ulnar and deviated position in my putting stroke. But that's why I felt more stable for a lot of people going left hand low or cross handed grips. And so regarding the claw, you know, the claw is a grip where we kind of find the trail hand coming more on top of the club. Now the claw was typically utilized for players who had issues with the yips because the thesis of the claw is as follows. The entire concept is known as antagonistic action, where one wrist wants to go this way, the other one wants to go this way. If you put them together, they kind of catch each other out, which certainly is true. Now, what giveth here also taketh away, in that if I put my right hand more on top of the putter by doing this, even if I try to get my arm turned in against my side, my form alignment is going to be thrown off as well. If I don't keep this gap here constant over the course of my putting stroke, the putter is always going to work at a very inconsistent path which is exactly why the claw grip has helped make bad putters better. It has never made a good putter great. And so just to recap these ideas, we want to hold the putter in between the heel pads of the hand with the putter pointing right at our sternum with that little bit of ulnar deviated position of the hands. And so what we're looking for in terms of how much ulnar deviation is based upon the player I'm talking to. So I was flown out to Arizona to work with a woman out there who had a really, really bad tremor. You know, she was a club champion several times over, routinely shooting the mid to low 70s, when all of a sudden she developed this affliction where hands would tremor, she could not put around under 120, whereby previously she was shooting in the low 70s relatively consistently. And so we had to put her in a position we call terminal, and by terminal I mean the maximum amount of ulnar deviation you can create in the grip. And so this is for her what she needed in order to putt more steadily to the point where she called me crying the next day saying she shot 81 or 82, whereby for you and I, anyone without Parkinson's or any trauma or affliction, we would not need that maximum amount. All we need is a little bit to lock out the unwanted range of motion in the hands. So yet again, the reason why we call this body lock number one is because that little bit of ulnar deviation of the wrist with the club in between the heel pads of the hand will serve to lock out the structural range of motion. Also, by you getting the wrist into this ulnar deviated position, you're going to feel more grip pressure in the pinky, which will serve to turn off the superficialis, the muscle that cause these two fingers that fire that cause overactive hands and the yips. So just to recap these pieces, so far what we talked about is posture, having proper stance width just outside of hip width apart, hinging the thighs back, take the weight more over the ankle to create more more balance as well as stability, and put the spine in a position that's much more neutral that allows for me to properly rotate back and through. Again, not saying that Nicholas was wrong creating all this curvature of his spine, but it created a lot more of a piston action with more moving parts, which was warranted on the slower, green, the slower green conditions he played on and the more dynamic loft he was using. That's exactly why presently you don't see any players on tour doing anything that resembles this because it's out of its place in time. So we talk about proper posture, hinging the thighs back, weight over the ankle, spine's in neutral position that allows for proper rotation. Again, the same posture you utilize for every other swing in the game of golf. I would never want to hit a chip shot from this position of all this curvature. From here I lift, there's my chili dip. I would never want to hit a bunker shot with my weight on the balls of my feet because I'm going to come up and out of my shot, there's my skull over the green. I would never want to hit a tee shot with all this curvature of my spine, making it enable, uh, impossible or unable for me to properly rotate. So again, this is the same posture utilized for everything. Now we're talking about the first body lock, which will serve to turn off the unwanted range of motion of the hands by locking out the wrists through creating a little bit of ulnar deviation. And also that's going to increase the grip pressure in that trail 
pinky, which is going to help turn off the muscle that causes overactive hands and the yips. And again, not saying it's wrong to go to a claw grip or cross-handed, but there are certain compensations that you don't necessarily need anymore, especially if you've improved your posture already. So next up, we're going to talk about bilock number two and how we're going to get rid of the unwanted range of motion of the arms as well as the elbows.